Hey everybody, Chad here. In this video, we're gonna talk about habits. I'm gonna put a twist on it and stay with me here for, for a second just to see if this video is for you or not. With habits, what I really wanna talk about and discuss as a, as a discussion is the whole concept of it takes 21 days to start or form a new habit. And lots of times they even twist it and, and say or state that it even takes 21 days to break an old habit. This was a concept that's been around, as, as far as I know, for the last 20, 25 years, maybe even longer, that it takes 21 days to start a new habit and 21 days to actually break a habit. Of course, But before we get started, I would love for you to comment below because this is a community. This is a discussion. Let's open up a discussion. I want to know kind of what your thoughts are on this. And I'll give you my thoughts, of course, because this is how we get better. When we talk about abundance, success, law of attraction, law of assumption, it's a community effort, okay? Everybody isn't the same, okay? Everybody doesn't have the same good habits or bad habits. It's usually our bad habits that keep abundance from coming into our lives. Our bad habits that we have basically repel abundance. We're kind of pushing things away from us, but we all do it in different ways. Okay, sometimes we're blind to it because we don't really see, we don't kind of see ourselves doing it. Maybe an outsider can see it, but we don't see it. So anyway, comment below and let me know your thoughts on this topic. Now, this is what I think. 21 days to start a habit or 21 days to actually break a habit. In my opinion, I think all this is pretty much crap. It's pretty much bogus. It's not true, okay? It's a, it's a nice little philosophy, but it doesn't work in real life. And this is why. I'm, like right now, I'm in my 40s, okay? I've been doing personal development. I've been doing business, sales, entrepreneurship ever since I, I was a teenager, okay? When I was a teenager, I competed professionally in martial arts. I trained professionally in martial arts. I'm not, I'm not gonna go way off on that, uh, but that was my whole teenage years into my early twenties. Then I, then at the same time in my twenties, went to college, graduated, got a degree and I moved into business. Then from there, that's when I really moved into entrepreneurship. Okay. Running companies, learning, going to seminars. And that's, that's when my personal development in business and sales and leadership, abundance, law of attraction really took off. Okay, I was always into personal develop development, but in my early days, it was really focused around martial arts. It was fo focusing around fitness, training, health, dieting. That's where, where that's where it started. And as I got older, I started to expand it in other interests and in, in business leadership. That's why I'm really I'm really into law of attraction, abundance, the mind, how we think. But this is what I've noticed just with personal experience is. Psychologists agree that we form our we form our thoughts, our decisions, and beliefs. Okay, by the age of seven years old. Okay, you can look this stuff up. Um, that's what they all agree that we form our beliefs by seven years old. So if we form our beliefs by seven years old, that means where do our beliefs come from? It, it comes from our parents. And by seven, it really depends your background. You're already in school at that point. I mean, you're probably starting kindergarten by the age of five. If you went to preschool, maybe it was four. If you went to any type of daycare, you could, you could have been going to a daycare by the time you were two or three. Okay, where teachers are teaching you stuff, whatever. The, the issue with that, there's not really a great big, there can be a negative issue because you're around different people that's teaching you that has heavy influence over you at such a long, young age. So if our beliefs and habits are formed by the age of seven, even when we're in our 20s or early 20s, and I'm not in my early 20s anymore, we already have, 15 years of habits formed, okay, good or bad, 15 years, by the time, okay, if we start at 7, 10 years of 17, 15 years, by the time we're 22 years old, we have good habits and bad habits, but most of these habits we've been doing for 15 years since we were 7 years old. <laughs> now, let's take the philosophy of, of the beginning of this video, okay, it takes 21 days to start a habit. 
okay? And it takes 21 days to break this habit, okay? So this is my argument with this, is how in the world am I gonna break a habit that I've been doing for 15 years in 21 days and I, and I, never, I never go back to it? I never go back to my old life. Make sense? I mean, even if I start a new habit and, it's, and they say it takes 21 days to start a new habit, but most of the time what we're doing, we're trying to, in reality, when we start a new habit, we're trying to replace it with an old one. That's really what we're doing here. We're trying to create a new habit, a new routine to replace an old habit or an old pattern that's not, that's not really for us or working for us or we're going backwards in life, not forwards. Okay, but this this old life, this old habit we have, we've been doing it for 15 years in this example, and we think that it's only going to take 21 days to form this new habit. Well, which just through, I hate to say common sense, that which one you think is going to win? A 15-year-old habit or a three-week habit, a 21-day habit? Well, you know, your 15-year habit is going to win. Okay, eventually. And this is what I've experienced in my own life, through my own pers personal experience. I mean, it's kind of weird that that uh, we always kind of go back to our old life. And I don't know if you've experienced that. I've experienced it many times. That it's easy to go backwards. It's easy to go backwards to our old ways, our old habits, no matter they're good habits or bad habits. It's so easy to go backwards because it's comfortable. That's what we're most familiar with. And at, at the same point, that's what we've been doing since we were a kid. Maybe we, most of us have the same thought process that we had as a seven-year-old or eight-year-old. Okay, maybe it, it grows and expands into different things, but it's really the same thought pattern. Okay, if we grew up in a negative environment, we tend to be negative. That's just how, how it is. And that negativity grows and expands into other areas of our life as we get older and older and older. But this is what I've experienced is if, if I start a, a new workout routine, okay, maybe, maybe I stopped working out, I stopped uh, being active for a couple of years and I, and I go back to my old ways. Then I, then I wake up one day, I look in the mirror, I'm, I'm not happy with myself. I feel like I have lack of energy. You know, of course, I look in the mirror, I look more out of shape. So I think, okay, I'm going to start working out. I might work out great for 90 days, for three months, way over a 21-day mark, <laughs> okay? Then I found I, I travel a lot, okay? But even back in the day, I would always go on a two-week vacation, three-week three week vacation, every year. So what I found was every time I went on vacation, of course, that would break my habit because when we go on vacation, we just let loose, have fun, sightsee, you know, hang out, do whatever. Uh, but we don't stay on a routine. You know what I mean? Once you go on vacation, you come back. But, but this, this is what I found. Every time I came back from vacation, I would kind of feel out of whack a little bit. And lots of times the new habits I was forming, even though I've done them for months, 90 days, three months, four months, five months. When I came back after vacation, lots of times I stopped working out because something threw off my schedule, okay? And what I find was is that for months or maybe a year, I didn't even work out. I got off my habit and went back to my old habits. I mean, have you, have you ever experienced this? Okay, now using exercise or fitness as, a, as an example, because I think all of us have done this at one time or another, especially with exercise, uh, especially with, with a fitness or a diet program. A diet program, we can eat really good, and we could do it for way more than 21 days. We can do it for three months, four months, five months. Then we go on vacation. Then we come back, and we just go right back to our old ways of eating bad. And this is, what I, this is what I found, and it still happens to me. This is why sometimes in my videos, I always, I always talk about, it's about staying, it's about creating routines 
creating a personal development routine and really sticking to it, really not letting letting people or circumstances really get in your way. I mean, creating a, a great morning routine or a bedtime routine because it's so easy to go back to your old life. It's so easy to go back to your old ways. Now, I'm giving kind of cheesy examples a little bit or examples everyone can relate to, but this is what I found in my own life and this still happens to me. Okay, like lots of times, even when I came back, even when I, even when I came back from Thailand, I lived in Thailand for one year, then I, I came back here to Ohio, and I haven't lived in Ohio for a long time, so I lived in Los Angeles for 20 years, but when I came back to visit in Ohio, my, even though I lived in Thailand, when I came back here, my, my, my habits I had in Thailand I didn't have here. It makes sense because, you know, kind of adapting to the time change because when it's daytime in Thailand, it's nighttime in the United States. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's a, there's a, there's a 12 or 13 hour difference depending upon, or a 15 hour difference depending upon where you're living in, in the United States. So lots of, lots of times it takes like almost two weeks for me to kind of adapt to being back into the States as, as far as adapting to the type time change and not feeling tired and all, all that stuff. Then on top of it, I'm visiting family, my sister, mom, brother-in-law, nephew. Most of the time I stay with my mom because I usually I haven't seen her for years and it gives us time to bond and be together, whatever. But what I found was, is when I stayed with my mom is that I go right back to kind of how I was in high school. You know what I mean? With the habits I've had in high school, the habits, the bad and good habits or the bad habits, maybe staying up super late, staying up super late watching TV, maybe sleeping with the TV on where I start noticing I'm getting crappy sleep, where I wake up and I look tired. Uh, sometimes you can tell on my videos where I'm doing a video in the morning, but I look super tired where I didn't get good quality of sleep. Then I get off of my morning routine. Um, I get off of my bedtime routine. Like in Thailand, for example, I had this terrific bedtime bedtime routine because I went by myself. Okay. I, I stayed by myself. So I didn't have any outside influences, you know, friends or, or family or a girlfriend to influence me, you know what I mean? Or, or that at least lived with me where it took me off of my routines. So in Thailand, I had this like great schedule and I, I, I talk about this a little bit in some of my videos, especially around abundance, law of attraction. Thailand, I had very unique experiences around abundance, a law of attraction, Neville Goddard, uh, law of assumption, because I was by myself and I created these awesome routines for myself. But then right when I came back to Ohio, I pretty much lost all my routines, wonderful routines I had in Thailand. <laughs> I, and it was, this is a very weird experience for me because I haven't really, besides visiting family for a couple of weeks, I haven't really been home for, for in, in a long amount of time. This is the first time I've been home for a straight like year, year and a half for the last 20 years. So it's really been a very unique experience because you can, you can see how I kind of start floating backwards to old habits I had in high school which is kind of weird. This is why I've always thought the whole concept of it takes 21 days to start a habit or it takes 21 days to break a habit. It's, it, it's, it's kind of bogus. It's kind of like, it's far fetched. Uh, it, it's not, it's, it's really not reality. It's not really being honest with yourself. You see, in order to get results in your life, only in my opinion is you have to be brutally honest with yourself. You have to be honest with yourself. What, what am I doing? What is Chad doing? Okay. And we know all this information on law of attraction, abundance, success. We, a lot, a lot of people can sit here and de debate, debate with me, have discussions, but yet at the same time, they know all this information, but yet at the same time, they're not getting results in their life or they're not getting results that they really want in their life. Okay. Why is that? Most of the time is because we're not being honest with ourselves. We're not being brutally honest. We're not going deep and saying, what am I really doing? Okay, what bad habits do I really have? My last thought on this, even if, if you talk to people that have addictions, you talk to people that that have broke addictions, maybe, maybe they were addicted to drugs, maybe they were addicted to alcohol, they were alcoholic, 
I mean, sometimes they're a high functioning alcoholic, meaning that they still, they pretty much still have a job, but when they come home, they just drink until they go to bed. Um, if people struggle with smoking, okay, if you talk to them and they're really honest with you, lots of times I talk to smokers and they actually have quit. And sometimes it's taken months to quit, years to quit. Sometimes they wean themselves off. Sometimes I had friends where, where if they were smoking 50 cigarettes a day, they told me that what they started doing is like they started, they counted their cigarettes and said, okay, I'm only going to smoke 49 cigarettes today. I'm only going to smoke 48. And they kind of wean themselves way down until they finally just quit. But this is a unique thing. They said, well, Chad, it's a decision every single day not to smoke. Okay. I still have the cravings to do it, but it's, it's that decision every single day not to do it. Because I know once I do it, I'll go right back to my old life. I'll go right back to smoking. I'll go right back to smoking two packs a day. I'll go right back to it. It's a decision every single day. And, and I never struggle with smoking. But, but, I, but I asked some of my friends, like, well, how does it feel? And they said, well, it's just like the same. It's like if you're hungry and you're really craving for a meal, or you're craving for a steak, or you're craving for a McDonald's or Burger King or something bad, but you're craving and that craving so strong that you, you find yourself driving to McDonald's and getting a Big Mac. Or you find yourself driving and getting a pizza. You know what I mean? That's, they said that's, that's the same thing as smoking. It's, just, it's the same strong craving that you have. But it's, it's a decision every single day. For one, what's your thoughts? If you made it this far in the video, comment below. What's your thoughts on the, the whole concept of it takes 21 days to start a habit or it takes 21 days to... 21 days to break a habit. Do you feel there's some truth in that? Or do you feel like it's really bogus? It's really, I don't want to say it's a scam, but it's really kind of, it's not reality. It doesn't really work when you really compare it to your old habits. When you really compare it to your old habits over here, you have 15 year old habits over here, but you're trying to replace it with a 21 day habit. You're trying to replace it with a one month habit. And over time, which one do you think is going to win? Well, your 15-year-old habit is going to win. Okay, that's why we always bounce back and forth. Okay, and that's what I've experienced in my life. So lots of times, you're, I'm kind of going back and forth. Okay, now what we really want to do is stay as long as we can over in our new ways, our new habits, our new routines, and be a lot stronger with not giving up our routine Another thing I want to kind of, before we end here, is really talk about boundaries. Okay, one of the things I've noticed with myself is, is the reason why sometimes I go back and forth is how good, how good I am and how good you are with setting boundaries. And what I mean by that is when you have a morning routine, you have a bedtime routine, okay, maybe you have a, an, an exercise routine you do two or three times a week or something else that you're trying to create a great habit around, you we really need to set boundaries around that, okay? And what I mean by that, when you set a boundary, that means we still do it. You don't let outside influences affect what you're going to do. You don't let your friends, that's what I mean by outside influences, affect your morning routine or your bedtime routine or your exercise routine. Okay, you don't, especially, okay, sometimes our friends, maybe we don't see all the time because, you know, as an adult, we have certain responsibilities, but the biggest influence we have is if, if we're married, we have a significant other, we have a boyfriend, girlfriend, so forth and so forth. Somebody that's going to be around us all the time or maybe lives with us, they're going to have a lot more influence over us. So that's what I mean by setting boundaries. If, if I set a boundary around this is my morning routine, I'm not going to deter from it. And this is what I do. You know, I got I, I to gotta put a boundary around it and not let people cross that boundary. I got to protect that. Okay, same way if I have an exercise routine, I got to set a boundary around it and protect it. Same way if I have a, I have a bedtime routine, I got to set a boundary around it and protect it and not let people cross my boundaries. Okay, now at that point, people's crossing my boundaries, then at that point, I got to either have a discussion with them or make a decision. Okay, well, I can't be around you. Okay, or if they, if they live with you and they keep on crossing your boundaries, messing everything up, I mean, that's, I can't, I mean, I don't want to give relationship relationship advice in this video, but you, you have to sit down and, 
and make a decision if you, you don't let somebody constantly cross your boundaries. Um, but that's what I found, found for myself is being able to set strong boundaries around what I want to do. For example, like one of my morning routines is I usually do intermediate fasting. Okay, so, so that's where when I'm getting up, maybe I'm drinking black coffee, I'm drinking water, but I'm not eating breakfast. I'm not eating right away. I might go until like noon. That's when I have my first meal. There's a lot of health benefits with that. But let's say, and this actually happened to me, let's say that, you know, I get a girlfriend, okay, she comes over and stays with me, or maybe she lives with me, but she doesn't do intermittent fasting, okay, she likes to eat breakfast. So, of course, you have that, your significant other, she starts pushing that boundary of yours, okay, you know, give, give, giving you her thoughts on it that maybe it's, she thinks it's not healthy or whatever, or since she's eating, she thinks you should eat. You know what I mean? Setting that strong boundary and say, no, this is what I'm doing. Okay. This is one, this is one way, like a lot of people are not used to setting boundaries. A lot of people, and I'm kind of like that too. A lot of people are weak at setting boundaries. And I'm like that too. I struggle with it. I really got to work on that part of it, setting boundaries and staying with it and not letting outside influence influences just kind of influence what I'm doing every single day. That's why it's so easy to kind of, you, you start falling backwards into your old life because if you had stronger boundaries, you wouldn't be shifting backwards so much. So lots of times with, with me being honest within, my, within myself is part of it is because I'm weak at setting boundaries. If I was stronger with setting boundaries, it, it, would, it would be more, hey, I'm doing this. I don't care if you like it or you don't like it. This is what I'm doing. This is my morning routine. I don't care if you like it or don't like it, but this is what I'm doing. This is my bedtime routine. I don't care if you like it or dislike it, but this is what I'm doing. If you're going to give me grief, if you're going to be difficult and pain in my butt, you know, you don't have to stay here. You know, it sounds mean, but I'm setting a boundary around my routines. Okay. But anyway, blessings to you. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts. This is a community. This is us kind of coming together and figuring out how to increase our success. We all have different experiences, good and bad. We all have different bad habits that we're doing. Okay, my bad habits might not be your bad habits, and your bad habits might not be my bad habits, but it's easier, lots of times it's easier for us to kind of, it's easier for me to see what you're doing than for my own self. Okay, a lot of times vice versa, it's easier for you to see what I'm doing than my own self, because I'm, of course, when we look at ourselves, one, we don't want to be honest, and two, we're so emotionally attached to everything around us. So other than that, my friends, blessings to you, and I'll see you in the next video.